This is code.org. Let's see what we have left. All right. Add a new feature. Can you make it so the user can select a random item from the original list? Definitely. Let's over, head over to design, and I'm going to add a button. Drag that out. Let's call this, I don't know, random button. I'm creative. Cool. That looks good to me. Code. Um, and then we need the user to be able to engage with it. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here. And UI controls. And then an on the event block. So on the event what? Well, I know our button. It's called a random button. So on the event that the user clicks the random button, what do we want to have happen? Thankfully, we already have a variable that is always controlling uh, the item that is being shown. That variable is index. Index sets, uh, it grabs the name from the list. It determines what picture in that list we're using, right? Because if it's an index zero, that's the first item. Index 10, uh, the 11th item, because index is started zero. Just to show you what I mean, I'm going to add index here, and then I'm going to add names index here. Now let's hit run real quick. Index is zero. Oh, that one's not going to work for me, but you can get the point. The index is ticking up. So if we want to change everything randomly, we have a variable. So let me just head over here. I'm going to do x equals, and then I'm going to head over to math for my handy dandy random button. So first, what am I changing the value of? I'm changing the value of index. Uh, that valid indexes are zero to the end of our list. Well, how do we get the length of our list? Names.length. Now, remember, we have to do minus one because indexes start at zero. So there might be 98 items in our list. But since index start at zero, the last index is 97. That all looks good. And then you might have this and hit run and say, mister, it doesn't work at all. What's up? We still need to make sure to execute this update home screen function, which is somewhere up here, up here, update home screen. That actually forces the items to change. So now I just need to call or ask that function to run after we change the index. Cool. Let's hit. Oh, they capitalized screen. Cool. Let's hit run. Randomize. Boom. Randomize. Boom. Randomize. All right. That portion's done. Okay. Can you make, give the user the ability to shuffle the order of their favorite list? This one's a bit trickier. So let me go to dat. Nope design. I'm going to add another button. I'm running out of space here. Uh, favorite random button. Or let's add, uh, I'm just going to call it shuffle button because they're asking for shuffle. And I'm just going to write shuffle. If you want to think of a better name for it, cool, go ahead. All right. And now again, we are using user input. So I'm going to drag out and on the event. And what am I looking for? What am I looking for? On the event that our shuffle button is pressed, what do I want to have happen? There's a few ways to do this, but in the end, we need to move around the names that are on our favorites list, right? And keep in mind, it's the favorites list. So one of the ways I've seen this done, or that I like, is I'm going to create a new variable called uh, edit index. It could be called random index, but what we're going to be using this for is the editing or is the adding. So maybe I'll just say random though. Index. Okay. Now random number, since it's an index, it has to start at zero. And then I'm going to use my favorites list. So I'm going to say favorites dot length and minus one to make sure it's a valid index. Great. So I'm randomly picking a valid index from my favorites list. Now, how am I going to use that to shuffle? Well, keep in mind, there's only going to be one, two, or three items in this list. We already coded before to prevent there being more. So what I will do is I'm going to first use a pinned item. What's the name of the list? Favorites. And then what am I actually appending? I'm going to kill off that. Um, you might have to go behind the equals and hit minus twice. And I'm going to say favorites random index with square, square brackets around it. You could also have just dragged out this and put in. So random index is the random index we calculated from our favorites list. So what I'm doing is say this is zero. Bloop. Uh, let me do a real thing here. Bloop. Bloop. Okay. And now random index, when I hit the shuffle button, random index is going to be assigned a value zero, one, or two. 
I am then grabbing that position. We'll say it's assigned one. So that's this animal, <laughs> that dog, or it's assigned three. So it's English Shepherd or no, let's say it's randomly zero. Dalmatian. Great. We found one. Dalmatian. So now what do I do? I say, okay, well now that favorite list, let's append something to the end of it. Dalmatian. So if there was a four on the screen, you would see Dalmatian, Papillion, English Shepherd, Dalmatian. Great, but that still doesn't get at shuffling. That's where this next part comes in. I'm going to go ahead and remove whatever I just added. Favorites. Oops, actually guys, we just want to do the index, random index. Because for remove, for remove, right, all you do is provide the index to delete. Now let's grab our function because we need to update favorites, which is way up here. We're going to call it so it does all this cool stuff and change up our favorites display. So what we do is we grab an item randomly that's already in our list. We push it onto the back of our list and then we find wherever it used to be and we delete it. Make sure you have a pinned run first. Let's give this a shot. Ta-da! Cool. And it won't always seem to shuffle because there's only three items. Guys, keep in mind there's more than one way to do this. So you could use conditional statements, if statements. There's all sorts of approaches, but this is a really nice workable one. All right, onward.